So, Maisie. Um, right now, you're kind of up in the, the third level right now, kind of going through things. Um, the laughing that you heard sounds like it's descending down the, the staircase, going down to the lower levels. Hmm. This is clearly a trap. You know? Well, someone went through all the trouble. I better spring it. <laughs> and so I'm going down. Do, 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 do. So consider it. <laughs> okay, so you're going to continue following where that laughter is kind of leading you on to. Um, so you'll hear it again coming from around a corner. Uh, so you start heading down there and you you think you caught up to it because it sounds just so close and just barely you turn around. There's no one there. But then you can hear it farther down the hallway. So you keep going, you keep going, and it just it just seems to be evading you somehow, and you're not 100% sure how whatever this is is just evading you. And then eventually you get to a familiar place. Solitary. I don't really sleep well unless I'm in solitary. Your cage that you were in is gone, um, and there are no prisoners in here. Listen, I know you're trying to, like, torture me and break my mind and all that, but... Uh, you, you're too late. Um, uh, I'm, I'm already broken, and you're starting to get boring. I might go and go to sleep unless you either, you can jump me or try to bargain for my soul or whatever you're going to do. Um, but, um, but yeah, do, do something. I mean, I, I walk down here. I've been doing a lot of walking and my feet hurt, and I've been going through underwear drawers. And, you know, I have things to do. A wisdom save for me. And then I had the... What was that? That was... So I got a 10. Once again, you hear from behind you... Well, not from behind you this time, actually. As you look around, you see yourself in the mirror. And there's something a little bit off about your reflection. I'm not aging well. Oh, man. It starts smiling when you're not smiling. And you start hearing in a very deep voice, Maisie, Maisie. I think I'm getting sick. Give me your answer, do. Gone crazy over my love for you. And then it goes back to what you look like right now. Your reflection returns to itself. And you hear that laugh again. Little jerk. And coming up from me. Coming up from behind the mirror, kind of propping itself up on its small elbows. You see this small little red face with these small nubs of horns as it laughs at you. That's hurtful. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. You're my demon. Mm. Yep. Turn into a crow and sit on my shoulder. He's a crow. Okay, now sit on my shoulder. And he comes hopping down and sits down on your shoulder. Okay. We're going to go through and cause chaos. I've already been stealing everyone's left shoes, and I've been switching their drawers and stuff. Now we're going to take women's unmentionables, right? And then we're going to put them in places where their spouses are going to find it. <laughs> and uh, you just hear that little that little giggle. <laughs> and it does, just sounds unnatural coming from a crow. If anybody else were there, you guys would be creeped out by that sound <laughs> that came out of the crow's mouth. Maisie, on the other hand, it makes her happy. Something actually truly makes her happy. And it's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> She's smiling. She's like, let's go play. And then she... <laughs> Guckmar likes to play. Oh, we're going to have to work on that name. This is the only name Gokmar knows. 
you know, well, I'll, I'll think of something, but like this duck mar thing isn't going to work. <laughs> Guck. Guck mar. Guck mar. Guck. Guck. Guck mar. Guck mar. <laughs> Guck mar. <laughs> Guck mar. Guck mar. Guck mar the imp. <laughs> now let's play. Yeah, you guys will. It is like midnight. Do you guys want to rest at all? Before I mean, we continue on? Yes. I think we should. Probably yeah. a good idea. Okay. Uh, go ahead and, and mark yourselves down for a long rest. So restore your hit points, restore your spell slots, whatever else needs to be restored for the time being. We'll just, uh, we'll, we'll give you this long rest here. <clears throat> I didn't take any damage. Yeah, I don't think there was a lot going on, but some people had some spell slot stuff going mm -hmm. on and other I'm things. I'm like, I took a used. couple points of damage from first episode, but it took me this long to get it back. So you all kind of like just take enough time to be able to recuperate. Not, not a lot of real damage was done to you in the fight that you'd been in, uh, any of the fights you'd been in so far. Um, and Maisie's doing something that really helps her relax and really helps her rest up right now. <laughs> I'm going to sleep like a psychotic baby. <laughs> Tossing oh, and turning. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that, uh, morning will start to come around. We'll go to Gilly's room where you're just getting up, getting ready for the day. Uh, really quick, what is Gilly's routine for getting up in the morning? What does she do to get ready for the day? Um, well, she always starts out with her, you know, uh, 50 set of push-ups, and then does a five-minute plank, and then, uh, makes her bed. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> then bench that. presses and then, the bed. And then goes for, uh, a f <laughs> yeah, bench presses the, the bed, and then goes for a five-mile run, and then comes back and, and showers, and then, you know, hits the mess hall. Okay. That so, sounds awful. So you'll have gone through your, your daily routine, your exercise regime, and then uh, when you go to open your door, there's an Akima. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, can you read this for me? And she just kind of shoves the book in your face. And I need to know what this says. And she just kind of reaches over the book and points to the, the, the name of the kingdom or the city or whatever it is. This right here. Do you want me to roll, or do you want me to take a guess? You know what it is. Drakthal? Mm-hmm. It says Drakthal. What's that? It's my home. Well, that is even better. Ugh. We can discuss this next part over food. Come, let us discuss. <laughs> <laughs> and she just kind of I'm starving. walks away. <laughs> Come, let us discuss. <laughs> I love that. <clears throat> okay. Um, Sylvan. So Sylvan has already gotten up, and when and when you go to find him, instead you find this note that just says, "Stepped out. Find me at TSC, Sylvan." So Sylvan is walking across town because... <laughs> well, that's rude. As I deciphered the note, I realized that it might be able to give us information about what's going on. Because okay. the... Do, I, do we want to reveal what the note says? It's up to you. Uh, you're not there right now. Right. So unless so you, you left it there or... I'm going to be mysterious. I'm not going to read them the note. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm cur currently walking across Salago towards Van Ilm. Okay. Um, well, you're, so the thing with Stronghold is in the center, the central dominion yeah. right there. And so like Van Ilm is just up to, uh, right next to it, like buttressing up to it. Um, it's, it's just like a 20 minute walk from the Stronghold. It's actually a, the, where you're going to is, um, the consistent place where uh, the the fangless go to, you know, get water. <laughs> right. 
So I I got up a little early and I just I walk into the shining crown. Okay. And we'll come back to that in a moment. So, you guys, um, would you have gone to his room <clears throat> to go find him? Yes. Before or after food? After food. After food? Okay. So, yeah, you would have been there, for, uh, gotten there, and been sitting in there for a minute. So, um, you guys go eat your food. Maisie, are you joining them at the mess hall? Sure, yeah. And then um, I'm in the mess hall with a bird, <clears throat> and so I sit down. And then I look at everyone. Everyone probably looks at me. I said, I have a familiar now. It's a crow. Pretty cool. Yeah. What's your crow's name? Uh, Mesoplysmic. Or some, I, I, I don't know. Play the laugh for me really quick. <laughs> All of a sudden you hear. Excuse me. <coughs> Uh, I got I got a little something when we were fighting all those assassins on the way here. It was well covered. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe Akima has something for that. I might. Not on me. It'd probably be in my room. I'm not prepared for adventuring, so I don't have any of my essentials on me, but I might. Okay, so um, Akima is going to like become kind of serious, and she's going to start to tell um, Gilly and Maisie a little bit of, um, about why she is here, um, because tabaxis as a species don't typically leave their families. It is kind of a rarity to see a tabaxi um, outside of its village or where it lives. And so she's going to start, you know, telling like, for hundreds of years, my people have been sending out seekers to find the, a thing it was told to us it was called the ghost's heart and we have been scouring the the lands far and wide um, for centuries trying to even figure out what that is well about 50 years ago just before um, my mother was born we discovered that this city is where we would find our answers. And last night, I finally discovered what it is we are looking for. Um, and then, you know, she, she keeps explaining and she's like, um, the ghost's heart was split into four and one of the pieces is in your home, is in your homeland. I must retrieve it. I have to restore the jungle. I have to save my village because if one falls, so will the other and the world will be plunged into darkness. Uh, <laughs> essentially, yes. Well, let's go get Sylvan and see if we can take some leave and go search for this piece of the heart for you. I would, I would appreciate that. And then that's when we go to Sylvan's room. Are you guys going to head out to the Shining Crown from there? After I go through his underwear drawer. Okay. Uh, what will she find in your underwear drawer? Be honest. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually going to find a portrait of what seems to be me. A wife and two young children. She looks kind of out of his league. Hmm. And put the picture back. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to pan over to the Shining Crown as you guys start making your way there. As you walk in, um, it's early morning, so most of the tables have the chairs up on top, and they're cleaning up the floors from the night before. 
Um, you find in there a uh, dwarven figure, red beard, red hair, uh, cleaning up and kind of organizing all the beverages. And uh, you see another one, uh, another female dwarf off to the side, uh, kind of down a hallway from where the bar is. You can smell the waft of uh, fresh cooked bacon and eggs. Um, and there's just a couple of, they appear to be their children, is what you would assume, uh, uh, working around and cleaning up the, the Shining Crown at this time. And it's only them that you see right now. I approach the dwarf. May I get a name? If it's, a fre- if it's frequented by the Fangless, we would probably know. Yes. Um... It's not uh... Guckmar. Mordecai. Mordecai, how are you this morning? Ugh, you know, kind of a rough night last night. The boys got a little too rowdy again. You really need to talk to that captain and let him know that he's a better handle. At least they need to hold their alcohol better. <laughs> well, well, Mordecai, I will gladly have a word with Hrothgar, but I was wondering if there's any been anybody who, uh, well resembles myself, who has been frequenting your establishment. Looks like you, hmm. No, but there's been this kind of loner figure coming in at nights lately. Kind of sits off by himself and something about him. All the others just kind of steer clear of him. No, he just comes in buys a, a mug of ale and waits in the corner back over there. Was that the only thing that was at night? Yeah. Was he here last night? Yeah, he was. Listen, I think I'm going to spend my day here. Is that all right, Mordecai? Fine by me. Y'all pay real good, so I'm not going to kick you out. I take out two gold pieces. Mordecai, can I get some of that famous bacon and eggs that your wife makes? Of course, of course. And uh, so she'll go about making you a nice plate of eggs. And uh, I'm assuming that that's two gold an pieces expensive. is an expensive. That's it's an, an ex- exce- yeah. expensive breakfast. Yeah, I like <laughs> but it. I'm treating him well. <laughs> that's an expensive breakfast. Um, and he'll he'll take the gold pieces. <laughs> Gladly, but this is this is consider it compensation for last night. Don't quite know what you mean, but oh, thank you. And he'll holler at one of the kids to come over and uh, to go back and get yeah a platter ready. And about this time is when you guys would come into the shining crown. So we walk in. Ah, Gilly, Kima, you got my note. Why'd you leave without us, Vampire Hunter D? Yes. The D is for dick. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, that note that we found in the alleyway. When I was talking about ghosts from my past... You need to know. I need to be here alone tonight to meet whoever left the note. They told me to meet them here alone. And they said that somebody has Florac de Bergerac. Now, I know it's not smart, but at a minimum, I think that whoever it is who wants to speak with me is trying to have face time with me, something we haven't had in potentially a hundred years. So I'm going to respectfully ask the three of you, go about your business. Gilly, you're in charge of Maisie and Akima. I didn't do anything wrong. Why do I have to have a babysitter? After the stunt you pulled with heading back to headquarters without us? I left a note. (laughs) In any case, I will meet you all back at headquarters late tonight. After I've had a chance to speak to whoever it is that's looking for me. All right, I tuned out. I did, uh, could you start at the beginning? Maisie, 
go do your thing today. Follow Gilly. Make sure that she stays safe. Make sure that... And the three of you are going to go about whatever business you need to attend to. Do you understand, Gilly? Yes, sir. No. No, Maisie. <laughs> You're in charge of protecting them. This can help me finish my plans. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to take over this world. You guys can be my minions when I do. Gilly, get to it. It's about this time uh, when you, you three get up to get ready to just kind of leave uh, uh, Sylvan to his thing. Um, a young uh, Aaron boy kind of runs, uh, comes running into the bar. Uh, and he has one of the badges of the Fangless on his on his shoulder, on his lapel. And uh, Rolthgar has been looking everywhere for you guys. Your your notes, your paperwork, it's not done yet for one, but for two, they found they busted the whole ring. They figured out who was selling the antiquities and what was going on. Hrothgar needs you back at base right now. He needs to debrief you guys and needs to let you know there's some other things going on. Just come back to base. Gilly doesn't believe the errand boy whatsoever because she knows she did the paperwork. They're obviously going to execute us because we know too much. <laughs> so are you going to state your disbelief to him and say that to him? Yes. It, no, Gillianthia, ma'am, it's, it's not you. And he looks at Sylvan. Okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Please, sir, you have to sign the paperwork. Otherwise, all the arrests we just made will be null and void. All right, let's go. Akima doesn't like this little boy. Can I roll to, like, see if he's lying? Yeah, roll insight. I feel like he's lying. Maisie starts preparing for the obvious execution that's going to happen <laughs> when we get back. She's trying to make a flashbang out of some of her stuff and, a, you know, some smoke bombs and different things. 24. He is not lying. He's huffing and puffing and out of breath, but that was because he had to get here so quickly. And he's going to look at you all. We, we had to send messengers to every civil, single tavern because we didn't know which way you guys went, but I'm so glad I found you. Whew, okay. All right, let's move. Okay. So as you guys head back now, Mordecai will be like, I'll, I'll keep you posted. And he's going to hand you a piece of paper. And uh, he's just going to he's going to say, it's a special paper. When he shows up, you'll know it. Perfect. Thank you, Mordecai. Okay. Take care of your family. Of course. Thank you. Thank you, Fingless. And he kind of gives a little salute to you guys as you walk out. Um, so you head back to the Fangless Stronghold, and you get up to the front desk, and Miss Smith is just going through all the paperwork, signing it all away, and uh, getting everything in, into to order. Um, and she has a massive pile, and you see just a line of convicts heading, almost heading out the door. <laughs> and she uh, looks up. You've held up this entire operation, Sylvan, and she's going to flap down about uh, 10 sheets of paper for you. Get to signing now. <laughs> Once you're done, go up to Captain Horthgar's office. He has a debriefing for you guys. Miss Smith. Thank you very much. And she goes back and just signing. And every single one that she goes through, another convict goes through a different door. <laughs> and they're just slowly uh, going through. Um, okay. Remember, be ready. Back to back. As we head up to the captain's office, I would tell Sylvan about my little friend's visit last night, Frederick, right? And how he, uh, well, we knew he was dead, but he said that a price had been extract or exacted. exacted, and we were supposed to watch after his family. 
Maisie, keep your head on a swivel. I will. So when I when we go in, I'm going to make sure to keep my back up against the wall so the assassins can't get me, and I'm going to stay near the door. <laughs> and also, with a, the locking mechanism goes in, I'm going to take a bunch of uh, wet toilet paper that I've chewed up into a ball, and I'm going to shove it in there so the lock can't fully lock. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So Rothgar is sitting there at his desk, and he just has a stack of books, a stack of paperwork that he's going through, and he's leaving through it. He looks up at you guys, and you can he's blurry-eyed. He looks like he's been up most of the, most of the night going through things. Oh, thank goodness you're all here again. What happened? What did you do? It all depends. What's on what going you on? know. <laughs> Gilianthia, please, please give me a report. Um, it's right there on the table in front of you. I want to hear it from you, though. What, what, what did these, and he's going to kind of glare at Sylvan, do? Well, we have some new recruits, and I don't think they read the handbook, sir, because, like, Rowena was setting up fires in, like, common places, and then, like, there's a wagon that she caught on fire, and then there was a civilian that she caught on fire. There was a lot of fire last night, sir. Technically, we extinguished the fire. This is true. Akima's just like, Fire? Multiple? What did you do? It burned all the valuables. <sighs> well, that's fine. Thousands of dollars worth of merchandise gone. Yeah. Thank you. I needed to hear it from you. All right. Luckily, we'll be able to cover you for it. Let's just say that there's a few families that are very upset that they uh, not only didn't get their family members back but they didn't get any of their heirlooms and other antiquities back. Luckily for all of you, the one ledger you uncovered, we found another cipher hidden within it and found a few more, and that led to a few more. I, have you all heard of the Moon Lords? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Okay, they, they're they becoming a thorn in our side at this point. Uh, we thought them just to be a new religion popping up. It appears that they're more than just that. Ugh. We're trying to figure out how to handle them. Most of the most of the Fangless are out right now. Most of the, the troops are out trying to round up who we can and who we know to be connected with this. I, as you could probably see at the foyer up front, there's a lot. There's a lot. And we don't know if these are new recruits. We don't know if they're actually members of the, the Moon Lords or what's going on right now. All I know is it's just so much paperwork. So much paperwork right now. But that leads me to what I need from you guys now. The kitchens have said that not only have rats been getting into their food, they have also been or their cats have also been disappearing. That usually take care of the rats. It seems the rats are getting more aggressive. And just view this as penance for everything that you're putting me through right now with all this paperwork and all this other stuff. Go and figure out what's going on. Take care of the rats, please. <laughs> you got demoted to rat duty. I don't eat rat. So, Raw. sir, if... If if Sylvan got demoted to rat duty, am I in charge now? Gilianthia, you're the only one that did your paperwork. Take the charge of this. I would like to point out, I am not a part of the thing list, so none of this <laughs> is my fault. I'm not part right, of did you, you. Did you say that to him? Sure, yeah. He's going to look at you. If you want to continue using our library, you're going to help them. We'll that is right. all. Y'all are dismissed. We'll get right on it, Captain. Thank you. Lock the door behind you, please. Hey, what's my rank, anyways? <laughs> <laughs> That's up to Gilly. <laughs> I'm assigning ranks. <laughs> so I legit got demoted. <laughs> I really just got demoted. For now, yes. Until the problem with the rats. Are you asking him? Yes. 
Hrothgar. I fully support Gilianthia receiving a command, but what are you thinking? I'm thinking that you are a liaison that we hire on that has never actually became a member of the Fangless, that we entrusted you to teach the detective ways to Gilly and have failed horribly. So maybe somebody with a little more uh, promise oh. can help you understand what this organization's about. Well, to defend Sylvan a little bit, I'm a lot to handle. I'm a hot mess. And he looks around. Where's the the purple one? Where's the tiefling you guys had with you? Oh, her head hurt. So I uh, locked her in a room so she would sleep. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, go go take care of the rat's mess. And maybe after that, we can discuss more, Sylvan. Right now, like I said, I just view this as penance. But Gilly's in charge. So Akima just kind of like slips Sylvan a little piece of aloe and she's like, this is for that bird. (laughs) (laughs) If I I could, I would give you another D6. (laughs) That was fantastic. (laughs) Way to take that beating. (laughs) Oh my. I like (laughs) <laughs> I already have three. Oh, you have three? Yeah. Oh. So they're... I'll put them out so you can see them. Oh. So, Sylvan, don't feel bad. I once got banished from an entire reality. He was right. I never technically became a member of the Fangless, which... Which is one reason why I haven't always su- been in favor of the bureaucracy and all the hoops one has to jump through. But, in any case, Captain? But that's what keeps the world civilized. <laughs> and we want civility because... We get chaos and Rowena burning things. Wait, so, this, this, this Rothgar, well, like, what, what if he goes, like, missing or something? Like, are you in no, charge? No, Maisie. I just don't understand the power structure. If you read the handbook that I gave you on the first day, you, you would know the power structure. You didn't give me a handbook. I have no handbook. I did. Well, let's go handle these rats. Let's start in the kitchen. That's where the food is, and that's where we'll probably find the most... The pantry part of the kitchen, to be specific. Right. Because they're always in the pantry. <laughs> Okay, so you guys head down to the kitchen area then? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you get down there, and there's just a lot of fretting going on. There's a lot of people hauling, like, flour and rice and other things out. Um, Maisie wanted flour. I, I bought flour, so I, I, ha- I have uh, flour to flour the mimics. Um, and, yeah, just a bunch of this other food that should be stored. Uh, it should be able to be stored for a long time. So. Mm-hmm. A long time. They're non-perishable kind of things, that, but they're hauling them out and like taking them to the back alley. I would stop someone and say, "Why are Why are you removing the food?" Because, and he opens it up, and you look inside. There's rad droppings all throughout it. Mm. They got into so much of the food, and now we got to take all this out and restock. And Rothgar is so angry right now, so angry, and he just kind of keeps walking off and just. So angry. Does your kind eat cats? Rats. No, but there's there's rats because the cats haven't oh. been seen. So someone, so, you know, so, you know, it's kind of like the old lady who swallowed a fly, the cat and the dog. And, you know, it's the whole, so somebody ate, some, someone swallowed the cats. Mm. It wouldn't be unheard of. Especially if it's a Nosferatu or another more savage version of a vampire, a Strigoi, or... But that would mean that they're transforming... That would mean that the vampires have a lot more sway than we ever knew. You need sway to suck a cat? (laughs) Cat Oh, dear. Cat suckers. Well... (laughs) 
All right, do you guys continue on into like the pantry and the So Akima's storage? gonna uh, see if she can like smell the rat's nest because like okay. if there's if there's this much damage, there has to be a nest. So Akima is going to try and find the actual nest, not the rats. Okay. The actual nest. Go ahead, roll perception with advantage. Or investigation, sorry. Investigation. With advantage. Uh, <laughs> if you have three dice, it's automatic success. Hiya! <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you smell them. <laughs> Found it! <laughs> um, the, out in the hallway where you're at now, there's not a strong scent, but as you move closer into where the food stuff is all stored, you smell rats have been everywhere. Um, you kind of keep following along it's kind of overpowering the scent but you're able to kind of follow a little bit of a trail um you can kind of see where they've gone you can see where the the droppings and stuff and where where things have been drug across the floor leading to this uh small little uh kind of like a manhole cover that's been slid out and when you look down in there, you see more people pulling more stuff up. This is like a cold storage area. Okay. So I'm going to go down into the manhole area. There, see a following her? Yeah, follow the cat. Yeah, the okay. two of us, Cad. Could Gilly fit? Uh, it's going to be a tight fit. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. <Sorry. laughs> yes, she'll be able to. Okay. She'll have to kind of like toss her, her glaive down to you guys to, in order to get there. <laughs> But you'll be able to get there and then uh, sniffing uh, farther back, kind of moving through the people, you go farther and farther and farther. And then you come up to this, um, the back wall and you can see where they have gone behind a, a, this pile of crates. Okay, so I'm going to start carefully removing the crates. Okay. <laughs> Listen, so all these vampires are going to have to have some place that's their layer that doesn't not expose to sunlight so i thought like a, a boarded up building or like the sewers or something so we're probably going down into their layers at, at their layer and it's a trap and they're going to try to kill us so i'm going to prepare something a, a little special for them so she starts mixing some stuff as uh, she's uh, walking um you said that right as this younger little Aaron boy kind of walks by you and vampires yeah, all there's a whole sewer full of them, and there's assassins in the street. <laughs> he just kind of runs away, ah, crying. And he... As Akima's moving boxes, you really shouldn't scare the little people. <laughs> that was a child. That one was a child. <laughs> so moving these crates um, uh, out of the way, you notice that there is this um, this hole behind all of these crates. Uh, it looks like they actually came through the brick and dug out. And if you look back, it's just dark. There's nothing lighting up behind there, but it seems to expand out through there. So I have dark vision. Would I be able to see more? Not really, because there's not a light source penetrating into it. Okay. So... Uh, I'm going to find a light source, so I'm going to pause... I'm going to go find a torch and then come back. Not too hard to do. There's some down here already. So Yeah, so. Um, and these particular ones, because it's around some things that are flammable, they're actually stones that give off a, a nice yellow light, more natural light. Um, Glorious. So that way nothing catches on so fire. I'm just going to stick the torch, not even my hand. My hand is not going through the hole. It is strictly the torch. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stick the torch in through the gap um, just to try and illuminate what's behind the wall. It's a rather large opening. Um, It's kind of strange that rats would make an opening this large. Usually it would only be large enough for them to come through. So that leads you to believe two things. There's a whole bunch that came through at the same time, or these rats are big. Uh R O U S S. Dire rats. Gosh. Where rats? <laughs> I was gonna say Rowena would have probably said, said where, where rats? rats clear up the top of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> where rats? <laughs> okay. Um, 
Roll me investigation really quick. And I'm taking my fireplace bellows, if you remember that from the other uh, episode, and I'm filling it full of flour. Okay. 18. 18. You will see tufts of orange, white, and other various colors of fur throughout the tunnel. Oh. Do you know what that is? You do. It's cat fur. Yeah, I was about to say. Oh, cat fur. Okay, I was going to be like... Oh. <laughs> okay, so Akima is gonna go through. She's gonna. Can I get through the hole? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So she's gonna step through the hole and start following the tufts of cat hair. You guys following Let's, Akima? We will. Okay. So you guys. Maisie's unsure, but she will. <laughs> you can stand uh, guard at the hole. No, I'm going to get bored and come in. At first, I'm going to be like, I'm not going in there. And then I'm waiting for the assassins to come. But then I'm like, you know, oh, maybe there are no assassins. And I'll look a little disappointed. Then I go through the hole. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's pretty narrow at first. Gilly, you most of all will struggle with this, uh, trying to get in there. It's barely four feet across. So it's barely enough for your shoulders and to get in there. And you laughed that I was planking for five minutes every morning. <laughs> this is why. She no, is no, like... no, 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 no. He was not mocking you. <laughs> I was mocking you. Uh, Maisie has no issues whatsoever. She's she's doing fine she's behind you. She's walking <laughs> through this. Everyone else is crouched and hunched. She's just like this. She's and... just like, this is No, nice. it's it's so short that even you two would have to yeah, lay yeah. down and crawl. Maisie's how fine, though. Huh? How tall? How's... It's... Like, barely three feet tall. Okay. So, yeah, I would barely have to duck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All of us are crawling, and Maisie's just kind of like... A tall halfling is three feet. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you make your way through. As you as it goes on, you see um, more and more fur. You come across a cat body that is partially eaten and chewed up. That's nice. Um, Cat's nice. <laughs> I should take, take it. Away. Take I was going to say, I should take a T6 from you. He's only got one left. <laughs> Come um, on now. That was funny. Okay, no, not for sure. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, um, as you guys go crawling along or Maisie walking along, it starts to widen up a little bit. You're able to get a little bit more elbow room. Um, eventually, you come into what appears to be a hallway. Like I want, it's very dusty, very cobwebby. Light has not seen the interior of this hallway for quite some time, but it is definitely tiled, even though it's all broken up and nasty looking right now. And it veers straight off into the. So distance. did we? Did I like completely bypass the actual rat's nest, or have we not even found that? You yet? still are smelling them. Okay, but I haven't found the actual nest yet. Nope. Oh boy. Nope. Okay, cool. Let's keep going. I'm going to light a torch. Okay. Um, Is my glow stick not enough for you? <laughs> um, mean to give you an adequacy complex or anything. <laughs> I, it's not me. I'm fine. I only <laughs> brought this thing so you people could see. Yeah. I can see in the dark. No, well, uh, listen, I, I need fire. <laughs> we didn't bring Rowena for a reason. <laughs> That's well, why I got it covered. Don't worry about technically it. Technically, I have fire breath. I thought you didn't know what you breathed. I'm fire. But you're purple. It's because you you the dragon the mother passes on her traits to the offspring, and my mother was a red. I feel like that's shading, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. so, anyways, you guys go along. Um, and then you'll you'll hear kind of can you play it for me the mouse noises oh the yes so did you know i was gonna follow the rats <laughs> i'm the dm i know everything Obviously. <laughs> you start hearing like little skittering sounds and you start hearing little mouse squeaks um above your head down by your feet um, and you kind of see them running, zipping back and forth. They're normal sized and they don't really pay any heed to you, but looking at them, something's not quite right. Uh, go ahead and roll me investigation checks. 
Hmm. 23. Four. 18. 17. So all but Maisie. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. She's preoccupied by the fire. Fourteen. Sorry. Okay. He wants more info. Okay. Info. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll. Uh, but Maisie will notice that there's a slight purple tinge in the rat's eyes, which is very unusual. And some of them seem a slightly like morphed somewhat. Like their joints are too big for their body. Some of them are a little hunched more than the others. They all, they all have this weird appearance to them. I've seen this before. They've gotten into mutagen. And with that, you hear this little chittering noise, and all the mice just suddenly disappear. And with that, everybody, roll for initiative. <laughs> Lovely! <laughs> I didn't mean to... That's not an actual number. Oh! Ow. Am I allowed to use my reroll token on initiative rolls? You can use it on any deep. Alright. So it is wide enough you can stand two abreast. How are you guys going in? Well, I'm in the front. I'll Because I was leading this expedition. I'd be by Maisie since I'm the largest, so I would be next to the smallest. I got a four. I have my bellows in my hand and I'm ready to pump the bellows, and then throw my torch. So I'm... I rolled a 12, if that helps you. (laughs) Where's Dennis? You should find Dennis. Who's Dennis? The honey badger. My honey badger. He can act as a mouse. (laughs) I just saw him the other day. Dennis is up there. But these these kind of work for my... Well, Dennis is just about that size, which is why I said you should find Dennis. What's that green one? It's cute. Is it a dragon? dragon looking thing. I love that. (laughs) There weren't enough mouse-like things that I could use, so I just. Well, you don't have any mouse-like things. You have a bear. You have a purple something. This guy's a mouse-like thing, and that's a mouse-ish thing. (laughs) It's a rodent-looking thing. But like I said, they don't look right. These ones especially don't look right. They are much it. larger than the other rats that you are seeing all around you. <laughs> um, are they like the size that made the hole? They're half the size of Maisie. Well, that's Lovely. terrifying. <laughs> um, but do they look like they would be about the size to have made that hole that we came through? Enough of them together, yeah. Glorious. Commence battle. Okay. So remind me, everybody, who was where? I got 12. 12. Four. 16? Five. Okay. Wow, we sucked. <laughs> okay, and you got four and five, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, Akima and Maisie, you two are up. Okay. Uh, ladies first? You are a lady! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what I mean. I'm going first. <laughs> 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 That's gonna be an epic short guy. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Identity crisis. So, <laughs> so remember I said that Maisie had the bellows mm. um, uh, primed and 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 pumped, and so my particular mixture is uh, flour, but I've also, like I said, I've been you know prepping the different things like that. So I also have a bit of iron oxide. I have a bit of um, uh, powdered aluminum mixed in there, mm-hmm. and also powdered magnesium. <gasps> and then I'm Why going, are you to, going pump to blow the, us up. I'm going to pump the bellows. I'm going to pump the bellows and blow it at uh, them. Take a step back, and I'm going to go to you to take a step back. And then I'm going to throw my torch <laughs> into it. The the thing <laughs> jetting that way is going to spread um, out and cover these people. <laughs> the flower is very flammable um, first off, and then you add the other things to it, and it's um, what's called thermite. And so it's going to be an airborne thermite burst, and so it should burn around 3,000 degrees. Um, so there's going to be really hot 
Poof. Okay. okay. Are you going for what the I'm... ones behind you, or are you going for the ones the in The ones front? behind. So what I right need here. to know is, did you just know this, or have you been researching how to make your own modern day <laughs> blasting objects with medieval time ingredients? Do I... you even need to ask? Yeah, I was about uh, to No, no, no. I need to know if he knew it okay. previously. I, I did know that previously, yes. And I asked for them when we were in the marketplace. I mm. had the list of, you know, iron oxide, powdered aluminum, and I wanted magnesium. Yeah. Um, what's your proficiency bonus? My proficiency bonus, um, I have a proficiency bonus of two. Two. And then what's your dex bonus? Oh, my um, dexterity, I have a plus three. Okay, roll me, um, we'll make that, let's do 2d10s. 2d10s, okay. So. Um, so, um, it's the, um, 11. 11? These guys just get incinerated. All of a sudden you hear these rat shrieks, like, ah, and they just burst into flame. <laughs> oh wow! As Maisie takes them out, that's all I got. It takes a while to set up, so I'm not gonna <laughs> be able to do that. Again. <laughs> Akima, nope. I love it. Okay, <laughs> so Akima is going to, in both hands, create her um, ice shards and huck <clears throat> them at the two in front of him. Okay. And the, the two in front of her. The, you're doing the ice knife. Yeah. Thing? Okay. Yeah, Go ahead. Roll I can your, create. Roll your attack. Two. It's. You're upcasting it. No, I can create an ice knife in each hand. That's how the spell works. At least I thought it was. That's no. how I read you it. You shoot an ice knife out. And then the damage would increase by upcasting it, but. Okay, well then I can just do the yeah. one. So just uh, yeah, roll your attack on it. And... I can just do the one. Because it just it, it does a burst effect. Too, yeah. So. Um. And then. Fifteen to hit. Yeah, that'll hit him. Cool. Which one are you aiming at? Uh, the one that's right in front of me. Okay. All right, and then... And then it's a D10 for damage, right? Yeah, so roll the damage on that guy. Where am I? Yeah. No, it's a D8, I think. No, it's actually. a D10. Is it a D10? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Nine. Nine? It just shoots and... Um... I'm like in the head, probably. <laughs> oh, no. Other other one. one, yeah. I'm like just straight into the head, and then it explodes. And what's the deck save? Uh... My spell save is... 13. Yeah, I didn't make that. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, so roll damage on him. And it's a... The, D- the knife just D- six. S- yeah. goes right between the eyes of this giant rat. And it just six. goes limp and falls to the <laughs> For floor. For the other one. The knife bursts into shards and nails this one into the side. Uh, it's It's bleeding pretty heavily now it's not quite dead <laughs> anything else you want to do um yeah i can uh now take my dagger and just plunge it into it okay so you're gonna wrap, uh, roll your attack with your dagger this time <laughs> 10 not quite enough. It manages to skitter out of the way, and you kind of plank into the floor before it, uh, you can stab into it, or it gets out of there before you get stab into it. Oh, wait. I have proficiency with it. It would be a 12. 
A 12? Would a 12 have hit it? He made it. Yep. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. I'm there proficient with my dagger. And so he's just stabbed down and kind of. And yeah. it, it and slides out D... for this. It, it's dead. It only had one HP left. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> yeah. You almost killed it. Okay. Now they're all dead around you, but it's gone eerily quiet. There's no other mouse or rat noises going on around you guys. Thank you. Nope, you're out of initiative right now. Okay. Um, I'm going to bend down and kind of like look a little, get a little bit closer look at the two that I've just killed because I can't look at the ones behind me because they kind of crispy. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I just want to like, I want to see if I can like see if it was kind of like a like a wear situation where like they really are like wear rats like they got infected that way or if it's like a vampiric thing where like for for whatever reason so roll me medicine or nature your choice i can do both <laughs> which one is higher <laughs> Maisie's roasting a marshmallow over we're going to do medicine because it is higher <laughs> this the sizzling corpse of one of them <laughs> dirty 20 dirty 20 on um, which one was it medicine medicine um, so looking it over, um, it's not vampiric in nature. Something has definitely entered into their, their body to start a transformation process, but it's not like a like lycanthropy thing. Um, it appears some, to be something else. When you look at their blood, it, it, there's a purple tint to it. And uh, as you watch, there's like this purpley mist kind of coming out of the, the holes that you made in their bodies from your stabs. Okay, is, um, acoustic, that's the word I was looking for. Um, is this, like, vapor acoustic? Is it, like, or is it just kind of like a vapor? It's just kind of like a vapor, fine mist kind of deal coming okay, off of so the body. It, like, if I was to, like, kind of, like, put my hand in it, my there's, hand wouldn't be damaged or anything? It, it, if you do, there's nothing. It just You don't even feel anything. It's, like, something ethereal coming out of it. Okay, um, I'm gonna turn to Maisie and be like, "Hey, Maisie, can I borrow um, a couple of your vial, like a couple empty vials, if you have any? I just want to take a couple blood samples and other fluids." Just to find empty ones. <laughs> okay, so she's gonna take a blood sample. Um, like spinal fluid, and then she's going to take a few teeth. Okay, and be able to recover that pretty handily. I now so. have all of that, <laughs> and okay. I took. Um, I'm gonna take teeth from both of them. Cause I'm not gonna. I'm only gonna take blood and spinal fluid from one, um, but I'm gonna take teeth from both of them. Okay. All right. Is there anything else you guys are doing? Gilly's writing all this down. <laughs> Copious notes. Copious Listen, notes. guys, when you kill stuff, you have to be careful taking trophies because that's how they get you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you think oh, it's safe. I'm also going to take some fur. Okay. And you <clears throat> think it's safe and you keep them in like the air conditioner, but no, they find it. <laughs> Can I do a nature check to see if they're undead? Eighteen. Uh, no, they were very much alive. Uh, they had heartbeat and bleeding profusely from all this, and so they weren't undead, reanimated, or anything like that. So maybe something's using like a growth serum on them because they're trying to make an army to take over the town. So I think we need to get this growth serum right. Um, I mean, we'll give them time to perfect it, of course, and then we'll take it before they can use it, and then we can use it to make our army to take over the town. Oh, Maisie, I love how you think. 
We should get. We should keep moving down this corridor. Gilly, Captain. Yeah, I still want to. We still don't know where the nest is, and we've been charged to take care of the rats. Yeah. To the nest. Okay, you guys continue on down the this weird hallway. Yep. Okay, so you guys will continue down. Um, eventually, you get to this kind of uh, decline, very slight, very short, and keep going. And it just seems like you've been walking forever in this hallway the darkness enveloping all around you just makes it seems like seem like this goes on and on and on you have at this point you have no idea how long it's been since you guys started walking down this hallway um occasionally you'll see a mouse or a rat run by you you don't see any more of the larger more disfigured ones uh eventually you come into what appears to be a room Maisie's going to be mixing a bit of Sodium hyper, uh, sodium, I, I can't say it. Maisie's going to be mixing sodium hyperchloride with isopropyl alcohol. 30 70 mix. And what are these components in layman's terms? Rubbing alcohol and bleach. Yeah. Yeah. I will be in the lead because, you know, I'm the crazy one. I I think you have a challenger for that. In this scenario, I'm the crazy one that went through the hole. Okay. <laughs> so you guys come into this room. Um, there's this faint glow of just torchlight throughout the room. It's, kind of, it's very dim, so it's kind of hard for some of you without night vision to see. But you get the gist of the room. There's some crates, some rubble, and other things. This room has uh, columns going up into the ceiling. And it's just very strange. Like, why is there this random offshoot down here connected to the basement? Um, as you're thinking about that, you hear some snuffling as you're... <laughs> and you guys see... Um, a hunched over, it looks humanoid from what you can see, very furry, it's roughly f uh, just over a little bit, four, uh, over four feet tall, and it has just this of treasures, gold coins, small things, and as it kind of stands up, you can kind of just barely catch a circlet around its head of what would be a crown. And it just, just keeps saying over and over again, more, more, give me more. And it's looking around in the room. And with that, guys, is where we will end the session for the night. <laughs> but, no! I have so... I wanted okay, someone we can... to break into sh the song Shiny. <laughs> Good Lord, didn't anybody here subscribe? Into...